Hi everyone and welcome to the 300 bird challenge. We want to see 300 different bird species before the end of 2024. Look in the top corner of the screen, we really want to fill that circle. Today we are going to look for some ducks and potentially go on a wild goose chase. More details to come back after this. Good morning everyone. The feels like temperature this morning is minus 28 degrees centigrade. Sarah, where are we today? Unwin Avenue Bridge. Yeah, we're starting at Unwin Avenue Bridge, which is near Tommy Thompson Park. There's a bay here, quite a large one, but it's sheltered and you get a congregation of different waterfowl here. We're going to see if we can just pick out a few more ducks that we haven't seen so far, see if there's anything interesting here. Later after this, we're going to go on a bit of a wild goose chase, maybe try to find a couple of goose species that were spotted yesterday. Will they still be here today? That's why it's possibly going to be a wild goose chase. Stay tuned. Let's take a look at this bay behind us here. This bay of Lake Ontario at Unwin Avenue was really busy with waterfowl on this chilly morning with all sorts of species all flocking together. We saw about 10 American widgeon amongst the common mallards, Canada geese and so on. We also saw lots of redhead ducks too. And it was fun to see some common goldeneye performing their head throwing display, which is a courtship behaviour. We've already seen hooded megancers this year, but here's our first male with his fancy white hood. In the last video, we saw a great black-backed gull at some distance, but this morning we got very close looks at one. Here's our first common meganser of the year, paddling a little further out on the lake where the ice has formed, with the temperatures in Toronto plummeting over the last week. And here's a couple of pintails. We've already seen them this year, but it's always a pleasure to see more. Everything else was quite common or we'd already seen it this year, so we finished looking out over the bay. Although, while we're on the subject of ducks, I'm aware that I counted a lesser scorp in my last video, and it was probably a greater scorp. Well, I'm going to park that one for now and we'll come back to it. Hopefully we'll find a more obvious lesser scorp soon, but don't worry, I won't forget to reduce the counter if I have to. Okay, we've had a look over the bay. We're just going to move up a little bit further towards the bridge, see if there's anything further upstream. Also, there's a few thickets, see if there's any perching birds among those as well. Already added three new birds, that's pretty cool. Some more hooded megansers were hanging out under the bridge. We also got closer looks at a common meganser. And we also saw a male northern shoveler, albeit quite a mottled looking one. Before going back to the car, we had a quick peek back at the bay again as a few American widgeon made their way past us. A herring gull also preened itself on the water. The air was getting so cold that Lake Ontario was now visibly condensating and a thin mist was rising from the water. Okay, we are leaving Unwin Avenue now and we are moving on to... Rouge River Nest. A snow goose was seen there recently, we'll see if that's still hanging around. If we have time, we'll also go to Durham region, a bit further east. That Ross's goose that we missed in the last video, maybe we'll see if we can find that. It hasn't been seen for a couple of days, but it did crop up a few times in the week. Stay tuned, we're going to drive east, away from Toronto now, see if we can find this snow goose first. We left Unwin Avenue driving north on the Don Valley Parkway as light snow began to fall before taking the 401 to the Kingston Road and then on towards Rouge Beach. We did have a bit of a walk to get to Rouge Bay where the Rouge River enters into Lake Ontario but on the way down we did spy a downy woodpecker and this blue jay. Plus a new bird for the year, we saw this golden crowned kinglet picking away in the top of a tree. Golden. Mm. 
The surface of the Rouge River was frozen over and it was seriously cold here with less shelter from the wind. We took a look around the beach area for the reported snow goose carefully picking through the many ducks and geese out on the snow covered sand. Bad news though. Well it looks like a bust on the snow goose unfortunately. We're seeing a lot of trumpeter swans that we've had to kind of take a closer look at. Hard to judge the size from a distance. Lots of Canada geese of course, you can hear those probably. Uh, mallards and a few other ducks, golden eye etc. No snow goose, so we're probably going to turn back in a moment and uh, we'll see if you've got time for another stop before we have to go home. But stay tuned to this video either way because we do have all of tomorrow to do more birding as well. See you in a moment. With time running out on day one of this video, we'd heard that there might be some snow buntings about half an hour away. Now, snow buntings gave us some real trouble last year. We missed them several times and didn't get them in our 250 bird challenge, so we could really do with them on this 300 bird challenge of 2024. So we drove further east, exiting the 401 highway at Bennett Road. Actually, just before we got there, on the way, a bald eagle flew over the car. So I pulled over and got some brief footage of that. Anyway, back to the snow bunting mission. It was absolutely freezing cold out in the open like this. Okay, Sarah, where the hell are we? On Bennett Road in Bowmanville. Yeah, we've come quite a way east, away from Toronto. We um, heard that there might be some Lapland longspur, some snow buntings in a random farmer's field, so that's where we've come. And we've been looking for snow buntings for the longest time. We finally found them, so that's really good for our 300 bird challenge. We were momentarily broken from our snow bunting reverie by a northern harrier flying over the field. As an added bonus, we just saw a couple of horned larks as well, so it was really worth taking this punt on coming further afield, and although it's not a goose, it was still a goose chase, but it's one that ended up working out for us, so awesome. It was so cold we barely had time to look for the reported Lapland longspur, which is a shame. We need every bird we can get to reach 300 this year, but not only that, it would have been a lifer. Wait a second, what's this? Back at home we slowly went through the bunting footage I'd captured. Looks like we did get the Lapland longspur after all. New lifer, yes! We do have to go home now. We have a few errands to run, but stay tuned to this video because we're gonna go out on another mission tomorrow. We'll be back after this. Good morning everyone, what an excellent day we had yesterday. We saw a few different species that have been kind of problematic for us for a couple of years, including the snow buntings. They've given us a bit of trouble, so it was great to see all of those. Anyway, this morning, the wild goose chase continues. Sarah, where are we? Bronte Heritage Waterfront Park in Oakville. Literal goose chase. We heard that uh, Ross's goose was spotted here briefly yesterday. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be here. We're just seeing a few common species out in the harbour here, but that's okay. We have a number of stops planned for this morning, so we're going to move on to the next location. Go see if we can find any waterfowl that we haven't seen so far this year and anything else new to try and add some numbers to our bird list. We really want to fill that circle. Stay tuned, guys. On another brrr, chilly morning, we left Oakville after scanning a mass of Canada geese and a few other ducks like mallards, goldeneye, buffleheads, and a few long-tailed ducks. We continued through Hamilton and Burlington towards Stony Creek, driving up steep roads as we climbed the escarpment. This ridge that we drove up was once, some 15,000 odd years ago, the shoreline cliff of Lake Iroquois, a glacial lake, much larger than the present day Lake Ontario, but located in a similar area. 
This ridge, the Niagara Escarpment, runs many miles through the south of the province and in places it can afford some pretty impressive views. We drove through some wintry vineyards along back roads in the hope of finding, dare I say it, a possible short-eared owl, but it wasn't to be and we've still never seen one. We tried a quick visit to Confederation Park for more waterfowl and there had been reports of a pine warbler, unusual for January, but that was also a bust. A pretty slow start to the day, so we moved on to Windermere Basin where water currents had kept the water from freezing. As we were setting up, a bald eagle flew overhead and we were afforded better views than the one we saw yesterday, and from a much safer vantage point than <clears throat> allegedly pulling over on the side of the highway yesterday. After taking a look around a few different places without much success, we've come to Windermere Basin. We're gonna take a look down this channel to see if there's any new birds we can add to our list. We see some waterfowl way down, so we're gonna take a look at that. We've also had a bald eagle fly over just now. It's not a new bird, but it's still a cool one to see. We'll take a look down here, and then we're gonna move on, continue the wild goose chase. Since the water in this inlet was still unfrozen, we did see a handful of double-crested cormorants. Most of these birds will fly south for the winter since the fishing becomes more limited here in the Great White North, but fear not, there will be tons of these around once the sun comes back out. Same thing applies to this great blue heron that was flushed from the shore. Over on the far side of the inlet we saw northern shovelers with much nicer plumage than the one that we saw yesterday. And a few other species that we've already seen were also present, like hooded meganser, red-rested meganser, buffle heads, you know, the usual suspects. Overall, Windermere Basin was a lot quieter this year than it was last year when we also visited, but still very happy to add two new species for the year. Since it was frozen over, Hamilton Harbour was an avian free zone, so we didn't stick around very long. Time to try somewhere else that you might recognise from episode one. Okay guys, as you've probably gathered, like the 1979 hit by the village people, today we decided to go west. But at this point we're heading back east again. We're now at LaSalle Park in Burlington. We'd heard reports of a hybrid, um, hooded meganser and uh, golden eye, which wouldn't count as a bird being a hybrid. We don't count hybrids on any full species, but it would be a cool bird to see. Unfortunately, we don't see it, just the usual common species. Lots of Canada geese has with all of our stops so far, trumpeter swans, that kind of thing. A few perching birds, there's some chickadees over here and some juncos. However, that wild goose chase that we've been on all day, our first stop today, Bronte Beach. Apparently, a snow goose has turned up there and a Ross's goose. Those would be both um, new birds for the year. So I think we're going back to our first stop. We'll see if it's still there. Stay tuned. Back on the road again, we took Highway 403 to Bronte Road and we drove back just a few hundred feet away from where we started the second part of this video. Thankfully, another birder told us where we could find the Ross's goose, so we took a look along the shore. And there it was. While we were warned that the snow goose had likely gone, it was great to see this Ross's goose. It's a lifer. Our initial views of the Ross's goose were distant, but I was able to find a better spot to watch this beautiful white goose. The Ross's goose is found in the central Canadian Arctic and the coast of Hudson's Bay during the summer, but it migrates south through the plains to wintering grounds in parts of California and other southern states as well as parts of Mexico. While southern Ontario isn't part of their typical range, they can crop up here occasionally during migration. The goose looks similar to a white moth snow goose with all white feathers and black primaries. They also have a tendency to flock together, especially in agricultural fields where they forage together. But the Ross's goose is smaller, and it has a proportionally stubbier bill. I had a look down the shoreline in the direction that the snow goose might have travelled to, kind of intentionally overexposing this footage so I could see the plumage of the birds more clearly, but the snow goose, I saw no sign of it. 
really chuffed with that guys we saw the Rosses goose the snow geese seem to have vacated the area I think we just missed them by a few minutes from what somebody else was saying but yeah Rosses goose lifer new bird for the year really pleased about that a little bit far out but I was able to scramble up a hill and get some closer footage of it so yeah nice one we're going to move on now to Colonel Sam Smith Park back towards Toronto on the edge of Toronto um, what was there again? A Lincoln Sparrow. A Lincoln Sparrow is there sorry Sarah's microphone is off but we're going to go looking for a Lincoln Sparrow stay tuned Back in Toronto then, in the Etobicoke neighbourhood, we crossed Birmingham Street, which kind of reminds me of back home because I grew up not far from Birmingham. We continued into Sam Smith Park. The Lincoln Sparrow was right near where we parked, so we saw it immediately. Though I only got a few seconds of footage before it flew, at least we saw it. There was also a brown-headed cowbird feeding at the same pile of seed. Well guys, we're at Sam Smith. It did not take us long to find the sparrow. Pretty much right next to where I parked the car, there was a whole group of people taking photos of it. So Lincoln Sparrow, another bird for our year, another one on the list. While we're at Sam Smith, we're gonna take a look around. We've heard reports of a few other bits and pieces. We'll see if we can find those, uh, like uh, black crown night heron, and possibly also a surf scoter. So we're now going to take a look for that over by the beach. Unfortunately, we didn't see the scotter or heron and time was pushing on a little bit. Okay guys, we've taken a look around Sam Smith Park to see if we can add anything else, but we're not really seeing anything too unusual. Where we started this video though, on this wild goose chase, we're going back there again. Unwin Avenue is our next and final stop for this weekend. Unwin Avenue is just the other side of Toronto. You can see me pointing at it here, kind of, like a bit of a plonker. We hopped onto the Gardner Expressway and drove through downtown Toronto, arriving back where this video began. The sun was beginning to fade. But unfortunately, so was our look. It was pretty quiet at Unwin Avenue. Okay, everyone, we've come to near the bridge on Unwin Avenue. Pretty much everything is vacated. There's not nearly as much stuff as there was here when we started this video. The pintails have left, the hooded megansers have left. Anyway, we came here hoping that there'd be a hooded meganser, common golden eye hybrid, but kind of just before we got here, we heard word that it had traveled to Tommy Thompson Park, which is just down the road, but we don't really have time to go through that. In fact, it's time to end this video. But the one thing we did see, Northern Mockingbird, another bird to add to our list. Pleased about that. It's been such a productive weekend. This one has worked out really well for us. It's seen lots of nice things. Sarah, what was your highlight? Snow buntings. Yeah, I think that's probably true for me as well. It was really nice to see such a huge flock of snow buntings in a field. It's been a nemesis bird for us for quite a while. Anyway, guys, time for us to go. Thank you very much for watching this video. We appreciate your support. If you'd give us a like, that would be great too. It will help people find this video. Appreciate your comments too. It's nice to engage with everyone in the comments under the video. And finally, if you're not subscribed, if you could please subscribe by hitting that red subscribe button. We're a little bit over 100 subscribers away from hitting that 1,000 milestone. Really appreciate it if you'd hit that button okay guys thank you for watching oh and before i go sorry we did see a bird i haven't told you about another long-eared owl we're drowning in long-eared owls i can't again tell you where it was unfortunately there's already a lot of controversy about people leaking where that owl is but we did see another long-eared owl anyway thank you for watching happy birding guys see you soon next video hopefully if everything goes to plan algonquin park see you then bye <laughs>